Dr. Piercy's Introduction to Debugging. In this video, we'll cover what is debugging, some types of computer errors, and a list of basic debugging techniques. Debugging is a step-by-step -step process of finding all errors or bugs in a program so that the bugs can be removed to make the program function in the way it was desired. Debugging is closely related to testing, but while testing techniques are designed to see if code is free of bugs, debugging is usually about fixing the bugs once they are found. So here we think of testing and debugging as separate parts in the process of ensuring that software works correctly. Debugging an error is a two-part process. It begins with some indication of the existence of an error, then it is the activity of, one, determining the exact nature and location of the suspected error within the program, and two, fixing or repairing the error. There are three reasons to consider debugging one of your main skills. First, we spend a lot of time debugging. Some estimate that about half the time in software development is spent in testing and debugging. By improving your debugging skills, you're likely to change this balance so that you can spend more time coding new features. Next, there are always errors in your code and you will have to debug them without introducing new errors. There are two famous quotes that illustrate this, from Edgar Dijkstra, a famous computer scientist, once said, if debugging is the process of removing bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. There's also Lubarsky's law of cybernetic entomology, which states, there's always one more bug. Thirdly, debugging is sometimes the only way to check that some code is working fine. In general, there are four types of errors that you will experience as you learn to program. These are syntax errors, compile errors, runtime errors, and logic errors. Syntax is the collection of rules for spelling, grammar, and naming for a programming language. Most development environment software will recognize and somehow indicate when you have typed a syntax error in much the same way that word processing software will indicate a misspelling. That makes it easy for you to see and fix these errors before you try to run your program. Here's an example of a minor syntax error in a Java program while using the Eclipse IDE. In this case, we've simply forgotten to include the ubiquitous semicolon at the end of line 30. Note how Eclipse signals a syntax error using a red underline on the statement and a red X in the margin. See our video on dealing with syntax errors in Eclipse for more details. For a compile error, usually you write your code in a high-level language, like Java, c -sharp, or many others. High-level languages means that you are writing in a language that is closer to English than the machine language spoken by your computer. The process of compiling your program is mainly one of translating your high-level program into the computer's or virtual machines language so that it will run. Compile errors then are errors that appear during the compilation process. These will typically show up as error messages that are displayed without your programming even getting started. A compile error will keep your program from compiling. Most compile errors will be found by the IDE while you edit. In this example, each line of code is syntactically correct. In other words, there are no syntax errors. However, the program will not compile because we are breaking some rules when assigning values of incompatible data types. Namely, we cannot assign an int variable to a string, nor can we assign a string value to an int. When compile rules like this are broken and recognized, Eclipse will indicate with underlines and margin icons. Check out our video about dealing with Java compile errors in Eclipse. Runtime errors are just as the name sounds. These are errors that will appear at some point as you are running your program. It could be that some or most of the program will run until a runtime error is encountered. 
Also, a runtime error will only be seen if it is encountered. Sometimes a program will appear to run fine, but perhaps some of the code with an error may not have implemented, as that code is only executed when certain conditions occur, perhaps via an if statement. For this reason, you need to be sure to test your program using as many possible scenarios as you can. Runtime errors will typically throw an exception and error messages will be displayed. In this example, we see that when the loop tried to advance through the array, the loop variable's maximum value was 4. While there are 4 elements in the array, the index of the last element is actually 3. This is a well-known error called the off by 1 error. We can see in the resulting console output that an array index out of bounds exception has been thrown. We'll discuss how to interpret runtime error messages in Eclipse in one of our videos. Perhaps the most potentially damaging and often most difficult to correct are logic errors. That's because with logic errors, your program may appear to run correctly, but provide incorrect results. Since many people who use computers assume that the answers they provide must be correct, this can be a potentially damaging situation perhaps financially or even life-threatening. Finding logical errors requires exhaustive testing, using inputs with known outputs. We'll look at some techniques for debugging for logical errors in one of our videos. In the example shown here, we are trying to take an average of two numbers, 6 and 10. Calculating it yourself, you can easily tell that the average should be 8. By looking at the output, though, we see that the average of 6 and 10 is calculated to be 11. You and I know that is incorrect, so there must be some error in logic in this code. Can you spot it? Again, in general, there are always exceptions. Pardon the pun. Syntax errors are easier to fix, generally because the IDE will point those out to you as soon as they occur. The most difficult, then, are logic errors, because many times your program may appear to run correctly, but some error in logic has resulted in incorrect output. There are several strategies for debugging a program. Some of the most commonly used techniques are listed here. Print, debugging, or tracing. In this case, we strategically place print statements within our code in order to see what is happening at those print locations. We also may need to analyze and understand error messages and stack traces and know how to respond to correct our program. There's the famous wolf fence algorithm, where we successively narrow down the portion of the running program until the error is found. This is attributed to a computer scientist named Edward Gauss. Another technique which is very useful is to use a debugging tool. Many IDEs such as Eclipse and Visual Studio have debugging tools built in. Check out our other videos on debugging to see these techniques in action. For more information, check out the references shown here. This video has been written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music are various piano selections played by Craig A. Piercy. This has been a Piercy production.